Yarlswood, Britain's most notorious and secretive immigration center. The last stop for asylum seekers and illegal immigrants due to be deported. Cameras have never been allowed in. But Channel 4 News has been undercover in an investigation spanning months. Tonight, our investigation uncovers the reality of life in Yarlswood. These are the first pictures from inside. 400 detainees, the vast majority women, their care handed over to the private security giant Serco, chosen, the Home Office say, on quality and cost. We examine the controversial detention of pregnant women and look at how they are treated. Who collapsed in the uh, dining room? Well, it's obviously repeated. The technical thing is that no further concerns were raised. The disturbing cases of self harm. <laughs> And the shocking attitudes of some guards towards the women. It is life under lock and key, yet the Home Office is clear. Yarlswood is not a prison. For years, allegations of sexual abuse, inhumane and degrading treatment of the detainees have swirled around Yarlswood. Allegations Serco have robustly denied. Their focus, they say, is on decency and respect for the residents. Guards who start on salaries of around £14,000 a year are appointed, say Serco, only if they have the right attitude. This is a member of the Serco management team. It was not an isolated viewpoint. Some of those women in there, they're horrible. They're really, really horrible. They're evil. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of them that are really nice, right? but some of them, these black women, they're fing horrible. Man. Serco say they realise the women in their care are at a difficult stage in their life. Detainees often resist forced removal, sometimes by removing their clothes. As one guard explains, that doesn't always work. You were going to the Royal Courts of Justice and we were moving rather suddenly. I ain't going to the Royal Courts of Justice, I said you are. You'll have to take me in minicures. They, they take the clothes off, right? It's not normal to make but it's a very common thing with African ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, but they never slim and petite and yeah. pretty. Humiliation is just one of the abiding memories of Yarlswood for Esther Azigwe, released at the end of January. In Yarlswood, I did feel like I was an animal. You know, every morning they come to count you. In the evening also they count you. So it's just like animals that they do count to make sure that they are at the right number, not human beings. And then I, I did feel also that I was a prisoner. Like 85% of the women at Yarlswood, Esther, who's from Ghana, says she was a victim of sexual violence before fleeing to the UK. Already struggling with depression in Yarlswood, she said her mental health deteriorated badly. When guards said they were about to remove her by force, she said she was desperate. They started running and then they started chasing me. And then she was like, Esther, please, we need to go. And then I was like, I'm not going, I don't want to go. And then she said, you need to go. And then I, I stood by the steps. I said, if you come near me, I will jump. And then she still came. And then I said, one more step, I will jump. And then she still tried to come in. And then I jumped, yeah. Back at Yarl's Wood, Esther's story has struck a chord with one of the guards. Really? How much can you? This one jumped over the stairs. What tonight? Esther jumped. Why did she jump off the stairs? For her. Because she didn't want to go on a charter flight. When was that? A couple of months back. The government denies there's a specific problem at Yarlswood. The Home Office Minister Lord Bates told Parliament last Tuesday that there had been no serious attempts at self-harm at Yarlswood in the last two years. Yet figures obtained under Freedom of Information show that the number of self-harming incidents requiring medical treatment here has risen from just one in 2011 to 74 
in 2013. They will slash the wrist. Let them slash the wrist. Why would they want to slash the wrist? Because I don't understand. Because that actually speaks. The shocking details of the incidents have never been disclosed. One woman had been at Yarlswood for almost two years. She got the longest one in there. She was in China, but she was the stair one, so I had to jump. And then got to the hospital in like a brace to their back and he broke it. She had to be in a wheelchair and that, they decided that, so she got released. Yeah, got to be in quite a bad way to jump from the end. This is the stairwell that both women jumped down. There remains no net or barrier should someone try to jump again. Serco say they take all incidents of self-harm extremely seriously, adding that in the last year the numbers have gone down. On three occasions women have jumped from the stairs and thorough reviews were undertaken to prevent those women further self-harming but each time it was decided adding nets or a barrier would be ineffective. Serco recognised that many of the detainees are vulnerable and say offering the highest standard of care is a priority. There is a healthcare unit providing 24-7 care. It's actually been outsourced to a different private company, G4S. But Esther Azigwe told us medical staff routinely treat detainees with scepticism. When you are ill and then you go to healthcare, they go like, oh, you are doing this because of your immigration status. They don't take you serious. You are lying. You are lying because you want to find a reason to, for them to release you. And then the doctor say that, you know what, if you are doing this because of your, your migration status, we have doctors who will take you back to your country, so don't pretend. This is the story of how one pregnant woman was treated at Yarlswood. It's Wednesday and the woman, we'll call her Anna, has rung an alarm in her room. Uh, uh, well, that is 1296, over. 1296, that brings a bell. She's the one that went out to hospital yesterday, who collapsed in the uh, dining room. Has that locked the ambulance? Yeah, and then I knew that room number. She's a pregnant lady. Is she still, is she still pregnant? I don't know. I mean, she came out yesterday. Well, they said she was bleeding. And the mum with the ambulance they they said she was bleeding. So I just know you've got to read it. They said she needed a follow-up appointment. The technical thing is that no further concerns were raised. But there were further concerns. And the following day, the woman was back in hospital and was told she had lost her baby. She was warned of the risk of infection and to seek help if the pain got worse. Just after eight the next morning, she did just that and came back here to the healthcare suite. Bleeding and in a state of great distress, she was desperate to go to the hospital. Serco staff record that she was refusing to wait her turn and she was spoken to for hitting the alarm button and trying to ring an ambulance herself. G4S says she was offered a doctor's appointment at 10.30 and further medical checks by staff at Yarlswood, but she declined. More than three hours after first arriving at the healthcare suite, staff called an ambulance. G4S say whilst the resident's miscarriage was understandably a deeply distressing experience for her, they insist she received an excellent standard of clinical care. The detention of pregnant women is one of the most controversial aspects of life at Yarlswood. They're only supposed to be held in exceptional circumstances. During our investigation, we knew of six pregnant women at the centre. While guards are not allowed to use any force against these women, there is increasing concern about the practice of splitting them from their partners to send the men back. Yeah. It's Friday night and an alarm has been sounded. There's um, a move on, yeah? Yeah. And I don't know how to get the cameras onto the legals. Yeah, because there's going to be families put the legals yeah. Guards are attempting to split a Sri Lankan couple. Watching from the control room, it becomes clear the officers on the ground are struggling to contain the man. Second response, second response, immigration room one. I say again, second response, immigration group one. The man is eventually separated from his pregnant partner and can be seen on the monitor being escorted away by officers. There are strict protocols around dealing with pregnant women and no evidence they've been broken here. 
But for many campaigners, the question is whether pregnant women should be detained at all. We witnessed another attempt by guards at the centre to separate a man from his pregnant partner. She couldn't get him away from her. She clung onto it, and we couldn't use force on her. We couldn't get him. They just didn't want to move, and they couldn't bloody move him, and they got him on the floor, and it was just awful. They, they were kind of like trying to drag him out by hand, and I was like, mm -hmm. Less than 5% of pregnant women held at Yarls would go on to be deported. Many campaigners question why they are detained at all. It's not just pregnant women who are only supposed to be detained in exceptional circumstances. It's the elderly and the disabled too. And it's not all the guards who are entirely without sympathy. Here staff are watching an elderly man on CCTV who's being held in the family unit. We don't know whether his are exceptional circumstances, but one of the staff seems shocked to find him here. I don't get it. Where immigration get off detaining people like that? It's like 85. Like my grandparents being detained? Oh, f***ing hell, man. Where the f***ing? He's not going to run anywhere. He's not going to go anywhere. What, he's going to be a drain on the economy outside? He's a drain on the f***ing resources in here. Just f***ing leave him. He's 85. Sick. Because today they were saying that he's been in this country for... 17 years. Yeah. This is the Kingfisher Segregation Unit. It's used as a cooling off area for detainees who cause trouble. Some of the guards' most aggressive language is directed at the women locked up here. What's that in there for? What's in there for? Tonight, a detainee has been locked up in Kingfisher for an attempted assault on an officer. Serco told us they would be shocked and angry if any employee talked about people in a disrespectful or obnoxious manner, that they worked hard to ensure the highest standard of conduct and would take disciplinary action wherever appropriate. But they say there are no grounds to suggest this behaviour is indicative of a wider or endemic problem. Allegations of male staff walking unannounced into women's rooms and seeing them naked or showering surfaced again at the beginning of the year. Serco said their male guards are not allowed to enter without any warning or watch women showering. But here, a guard seems dismissive. Uh, allegedly, what's into someone's room without knocking? Uh, I don't know, I'm not going to just now, so I'm just waiting for... You've met quite a lot of people. So I just get out of it, I just like tits. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm addicted to the viewing of tits. Serco told us, as a result of the complaint, swift disciplinary action was taken and this individual has been suspended pending further investigation. Tomorrow MPs will deliver their verdict on Yarlswood in a cross-party report on detention. They're expected to call for a complete end to the detention of pregnant women but they also want a radical rethink of the entire system. A third of the people who are detained for indefinite periods in centres like Yarlswood end up being released back into the community. So their question is, what purpose does detention serve? And is there a better alternative? Jackie Long reporting. Well, we did ask the Home Office for an interview, but no one was available. They gave us a statement saying they take the allegations very seriously. Serco and others were expected to undertake thorough and immediate investigations into all matters raised by this programme. The statement added, we will not hesitate to take appropriate action.